I'm Proshka Cavell. I'm a midwife and I'm working and living in the UK. I'm registered on the Nursing and Midwifery Council, as every nurse and midwife has to be um, in order to work. Um, check out my introductory video um, to find out more information about me and, and why we're doing these videos. I'm doing a series of them on all topics relating to um, labour, um, birth, pregnancy. Basically to tell you what they don't tell you in the books. Uh, remember, the information here is if you've had a low-risk pregnancy and a normal delivery um, at term, which is 37 to 42 weeks. This video is about your placenta. Um, I thought we'd do a short video about the placenta because it's such an amazing thing. We covered a little bit of it in the video about the third stage and getting your placenta out. Um, but there's a little bit more you may want to know and lots of people want to do different things with their placenta. So it's just to give you a bit of a heads up on, on if you're thinking of doing one of these things. So as we talked about in the third stage, your placenta has been nourishing your baby and delivering your baby uh, nourishment and oxygen via the umbilical cord. Once it's out, we need to check it to make sure it's out and it's complete. And there are several reasons. Um, one is to make sure that nothing has been left inside you. Um, if a bit of placenta is left inside or a bit of membrane, it's possible that you can then get infection and heavy bleeding. So we need to make sure that everything's out. We also need to check the um, structure of the placenta and make sure it's normal because that can indicate that there could be a problem with baby um, and so we want to make sure that everything's there. And it doesn't always be a major problem, it could be just a minor thing. So we check the cord to make sure there are three blood vessels inside the umbilical cord um, and we also check the placenta to make sure that it's complete. It's actually made up of lobes so what we have to do is sort of put it on a flat surface and sort of push it all together. Now if you're a bit squeamish it might not be the thing for you, but I really recommend that you have a look at it. It's quite fantastic and it's probably a lot bigger uh, than you think. It sort of looks like a large liver. And in fact, when the membranes hang down over it, it looks a little bit like a jellyfish. This will make sense when you see it. Um, there are um, two membranes because the one side of the placenta is against the uterine wall. So there's a uterine wall, there's your placenta, and that's covered in a, in a membrane. And then you have the umbilical cord and another membrane, and inside that is the baby attached to the umbilical cord. We need to make sure that both of those membranes have come out and they're complete. Okay, so um, we also look for extra bits. Sometimes your placenta comes out and it's got a whole bit and then suddenly over there, there's another little bit. And that's okay, we just need to know if there's anything unusual about it. If there's been a problem uh, with your pregnancy and baby's unwell, sometimes we send the placenta off to get it analysed because that can give us a lot of information about what's happened. Okay, um, so sometimes that will happen. Now, um, there will be blood, okay? Um, and sometimes we take blood from the cord if you're a uh, rhesus negative mummy, and we'll talk more about blood groups in our antenatal video. But if you're rhesus negative, we take blood because um, we need to find out what blood group the baby is. And we can do it from the cord, um, so we don't have to take blood from the baby. Sometimes, if the cord is not very good at giving blood, um, baby might have to be bled uh, a little while after, and it's just a little pinprick, and the paediatricians will do that. Okay, so what do you want to do with your placenta? Right, that may sound like a strange question. Most people don't even bother with it, okay? Uh, and we dispose of it uh, and we just take it away. That's what we do. Now, some people like to bury their placenta um, and that's fine, but you can't just take it home and, and bury it in the garden. Um, you have to get permission from the environmental agency. Uh, and that is because you have to remember this is a human body part and you don't really want your dog digging up your placenta and bringing it through to the house a couple of days after you've buried it. And we don't wanna have a fox running up the street with a placenta in its mouth and somebody calls the police and they need to find out who this placenta has belonged to. Okay, so you can see there, there are some complications. You can't just whiz off and, and stick it under the rose bush. Um, some people uh, like to do the lotus birth, and we um, talked about that briefly in the third stage. And that is when the cord is not cut and clamped and the placenta and the cord remain attached to the baby. The placenta is wrapped in lots of herbs and has its own little bag and is tucked in with the baby until the day uh, the cord drops off which is what happens with the baby who's had the uh, placenta and cord detached. We put the cord clamp on, and then one day uh, in the nappy is this clamp with the tiny little bit, bit of cord that's left. Okay, so that's, that's for some people. And then there are some people who want to eat it. Um, so that could be quite unusual. Not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, and when you see uh, the placenta, you'll understand why. 
Um, some people eat it raw. Uh, some people chop it up into little bits and put it in the freezer and have a bit every day. Some people uh, use placenta capsules. Um, now the reason for this is uh, some people believe that there are health properties and benefits from eating the placenta. Um, it's said to alleviate uh, symptoms of postnatal depression and we're going to do a video on postnatal depression and that's, that's very important. Um, but there's also uh, some controversy because some research says that it doesn't have any benefit at all. It's up to you. Uh, if you feel it's making things better for you, uh, then that's fine. You go right ahead. Uh, but make sure you um, speak to someone who can tell you how to prepare your placenta. Some people like to cook it. Um, and, and make sure that you don't just surprise people with that at a dinner party. Um, I'm aware that has happened. Um, because remember, not everyone um, shares your joy and wants to eat it. Okay, um, so that um, is your placenta. What else do we look at? Um, when we look at the placenta, apart from looking at the, the shape of it and making sure it all goes together, we have to feel the texture. Now, uh, for those of you who smoke, um, obviously I recommend that you don't when you're pregnant, but for those of you who do, there's really graphic evidence of, of the effects of your smoking in your placenta because your placenta will be, instead of healthy and red and quite bloody, is grey and gritty and not very nice to look at. Um, so there you go. Um, and if you're very overdue, sometimes it can start to, to go a bit a bit gritty as well. Um, and that pretty much is your amazing placenta that you have grown. Another entire organ that's kept your baby um, full of nutrients and oxygen. Any questions about the placenta? Let me know. Send me a message on uh, Facebook, Having a Baby UK, or on here.